Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about the integration between CyberSoft, our flagship product, and Multico C Community Edition. For those who don't know, Multico Community Edition is um, a really well-known tool. In fact, it ships, as it says on the box, um, with Kali Linux, and normally it's used as a um, uh, data reconnaissance tool, right? We can use it for things like resolving IP to DNS teams, doing research on your target, uh, generally allowing penetration testers to figure out everything that there is to know about their target so that they can shape their exploits to the vulnerabilities that very probably exist because of all this data that they gathered. So this is pretty um, useful tool in a penetration testers arsenal but today what I want to do is I want to try to turn this around on its head we're going to use CyberSift to instead enable defenders to go threat hunting and we're going to do this in real time in one of our test labs and we're going to see how that works before you start using Multego I would really recommend that you go through a couple of tutorials there are loads of them if you go uh, Multego tutorial on Google first of all this pretty much um, confirms what I had just said before and uh, normally it's used for as one of the first stages in, in a hack in an attack hack like a pro network reconnaissance um, how to use multi-go gathering info and then I mean hackers arise and so on so so we're really going to try to turn one of the tools around from you know bad to good so let's see how that works I have multi-go community edition 4.1.3 over here and a set of transformations which are available on request that allow Multego to communicate with CyberSoft. First thing I need to do is I need to have a, let's say a placeholder for CyberSoft to start and that's just a, a phrase entity. So instead of some phrase we're just going to put in a simple CyberSoft and first thing that comes up right click let's put in CyberSoft so that we don't need to go through all the transforms and we're going to get the anomalies and get the anomalies means show me all my internal clients that CyberSoft thinks um, display anomalous behavior and we're going to drill down into why CyberSoft thinks that there is anomalous behavior so let's get them uh, and we'll get a bunch let's uh, let, let, me, let me just pick on one right so next that comes up is IP to ASN which means give me all those um, BGP autonomous system numbers which this client IP communicated to in an anomalous manner. So let's go ahead and do that. And this one happens to be Microsoft. Um, we can ask Multego to show us why CyberSift thinks uh, this was an anomaly and that is what ASN anomaly notes does and if we do that we see first of all the IP address, the public IP addresses which the client connected to and two comments as to why it was flagged as anomalous. First one over here, OTX, which is Alien Vault's Open Threat Exchange, a very good um, crowdsourced threat database, which means one of these IPs over here was flagged by OTX. You can go onto their site and, and query them. And the average bytes transferred between um, this particular uh, in interior client and this part these particular public IPs was unusual. Now here comes the beauty of, of Multego and CyberSift coming together. So CyberSift showed you that these particular IPs are um, anomalous. And you can start going, okay, why are we connecting to them? So if we remove this, we can start seeing, for example, the resolutions. And we see that this is probably Mm, doesn't tell me much, but data to Microsoft.com, Vortex Win, Metron Live. So, 99% this is uh, um, legitimate traffic, unless you're not a very heavy Microsoft user. And we can do other interesting things like use Showdown's uh, API to figure out if um, Showdown has seen this uh, IP, has crawled before. And yes, it has. And it's for Microsoft Azure, which means that these guys are using. Um, Microsoft Azure and we start asking those questions do we normally use Microsoft Azure or is this someone who's doing data exfiltration right um, and together they let you mitigate attacks pretty quickly so if I start really looking closely at them 
then for ex and, and as an, an, an a human analyst i start getting uh, a feel for what is normal and what isn't because cybersift i'm used to seeing the output from from cybersift let's pick on this one and again ip to asn anomalies now this gave me something a lot more interesting because um first of all it's at microsoft there is google over here which probably is legitimate traffic but there's a lot of uh, virtual machine providers which is not normal over here uh quant cost which is known to have been malvertising and very interestingly this dynamic dns this uh, this for any defender should start raising red flags because normally it's used by malware so let's use cybersift show me why you thought it was anomalous and it tells me well it's been flagged by by otx as well and uh, here we switch back to the multi ego apis sorry transforms to figure out why it's been really flagged so if we get rid of this let's go to virus total which is one of my favorites and let's see if if any samples are known to have communicated to this ip which means malware was downloaded <coughs> oh uh, and there we go so Yes, it looks like there is a bunch of, of um, samples which communicated with this IP. So now all we need to do is follow the graph backwards and we know that this particular host communicated uh, is, is probably infected. And now we can run CyberSift queries uh, within CyberSift itself to figure out who else connected to these to this particular um, IP and then we can use multi go to see obviously for example this machine communicated to this Microsoft ASN as well so does that mean that um, this host is also at risk because there is obviously this path that connects an infected host to a probably a clean host and that's where the beauty of multi go and CyberSift comes in CyberSift guides you towards seeing what is probably infected what isn't and you can use multi goals transforms to give you further detail and at the end you end up with a humongously nice graph like this which lets you collaborate in in your threat hunting activities i hope you liked this really brief introduction and if you're interested hit us up let us know what we can do for you thank you very much